Well, there you have it. A week I've been having this um, internet instability, internet connection instability. And uh, about six months ago, the same issue happened. A chap came around from JCOM just the other day and uh, changed some parts in this some kind of box configuration thing that's on the second floor of this old apartment that I'm living in and uh, you know it seemed to be okay and then uh, unfortunately that all um, that all uh, like last night it started clicking off again what a pity um, you know it's been quite frustrating because uh, um, uh, last night in particular it clicked off eight times and if my modem's got a blue light or two blue lights it's sort of showing a strong, a strong connection and then it's got single blue light but if it's just green lights leds flashing there's no internet so from about seven o'clock last night i was trying to upload uh, that video when i was uh, at that shinto shrine buddhist temple and and uh and the other shinto shrine too and uh, <laughs> having a fight with shishi and um and uh evidently this thing uh clicking off all the time i'm trying to upload this video and like they put a compile it all together first of all with, um, uh, with the editing software thing and um that all went smoothly and i was listening to the internet as i was doing that and as soon as i went to upload it like I think about 10 minutes later it decided to click off again it clicked off eight times it was only to about 3.30 in the morning I finally got that thing sorted and I finally got the video up. So it has been quite trying but I mean it doesn't really matter with as far as my YouTube channel is concerned as um, videos and things but um, what does matter is like uh, I had a few Zoom meetings and uh, schedule, one was scheduled and uh, at, for one o'clock that was on Monday and up to 11.34, I think it was, um, pre-noon, um, it decided to just click off. And I was waiting and waiting and waiting, got to about five minutes to one, and I eventually I called this chap, and, and uh, then um, he said, yeah, I'll call back this evening and see if we can arrange something like a, you know, a real meeting, you know, a real interview, You'd actually one-on-one -on -one meet the person, you know. Now, I'm old school, I'm a dinosaur, I prefer to just go and meet people, then they realise, oh god, what have we got here, we've got a demigod or something here, you know, and uh, yeah, I, I rarely fail an interview, that's for sure. Maybe it's because uh, it's probably the best looking guy in the universe, I probably don't give a stuff what's in my head, and the mouth you know, noises that come out. You know, they're kind of like when they're looking at me like, like, oh, pitch black and Riddick and the Chronicles of Riddick. They're not, they're not movies, they're a documentary about that guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, I'm like a super supermodel. You know, but people say to me, you shouldn't talk like that. You know, like, what do you mean? I say, well, because, you know, you should tell the truth. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I go, well, you know, what? what? What are you banging on about? And they go, well, look, you know, you're just too modest. Obviously. So, um, I called up the uh, j people last night. It seems that my Japanese is at least good enough to, to do that. <laughs> Usually on the phone, it's just Russian roulette. Now, I can only really understand particles of what they're banging on about, but I can genuinely say what I need to say. So they can, and grammatically, it's all over the roller coaster show. But, um, I, um, so I was in the bath this morning, I, uh, I, was, I just amused myself with that, that Riddick line, and I figured. How am I going to shoehorn that into my <laughs> video today? Because I think I, I figured I mentioned this. Um, internet connection. And, uh, yeah, how am I going to shoehorn that in? Huh? Yeah, dude. My mind works in mysterious ways. Lots over there. They're doing their yacht thing. It's a Sunday today. But, yeah, I called up these dudes again last night. And, uh, more yachts over there. And, um, 
I found uh, this morning I did a test video turned it this way to see if you know that does it but no it's got the lining thing or whatever. Oh, there's another chopper. Actually in the past couple of weeks I haven't seen many military choppers and we were seeing at least a few every day for a span there so I figured they must have bolstered some islands or something over there or finished their training or whatever they were doing. Anyways back to it. Um yeah this uh connection thing um it came on again in the evening when when just when I was chatting with the, the fellow on the phone um in the evening he called me back and said yeah well, you know when he's got done with some classes you will call me sort of thing um, this is a teaching sort of stuff and um and I said hang on my, the blue light just came on you know the modem just clicked back on he said I said oh it's actually just clicked back on again I said oh yeah, you want to do the zoom thing now and he goes yeah, yeah hang on i'll just head back to the office i'll be there in 10 minutes i'm, I'm on a, a cycle and uh he goes no worries and uh, so we did that we had a bit of a chatty poos yeah sounds like a pretty reasonable gig um he's got to interview a slew of people so but i think um yeah you know i might pick up something there it sounds reasonable i kind of want to pick something up that that's, uh, you know, you shouldn't sell yourself short sort of thing. Um, I was doing a bit of work a while, but I loved it. It was really fun, but, you know, the money just wasn't really there. And you sell yourself short too much, you know. And uh, you shouldn't do that. Like, yeah, so many schools have undercut other people and undercut, undercut, you know, because of all this zombie apocalypse and all that. Anyways, the zombie apocalypse thing, uh, yeah, that's really affected me so bad. And... And um, and when my internet goes off, I mean that's you know there's some bread and butter right there kind of thing, and uh, not completely, but um, yeah, you know it's very very frustrating to have your just your internet just you know bang off like that. But this chap apparently there's a chap they don't know what time, but apparently they're going to roll up today. And I say, oh come on mate, it's a Sunday, you know that bloke probably wants a holiday. But they're probably working you know different shifts and all that stuff. So I say no no no, you'll um get the guy out there to you and we just don't know at what time so i sort of expecting a call from them so i figured well, i did actually plan on going to the warehouse today and uh, present some some things um yeah uh but that's how that worked out so then i was like oh shit what am i gonna what am i gonna do and, uh, for today so i figured you know obviously times are hard well they are but you know effort um if you're gonna just try to enjoy it anyways i mean the, the freaking sun's shining over there beautiful it's just beautiful what was that moon about today too like it was yesterday um yeah just just try to enjoy it anyways so i figured you know you might just have to get some energy drinks the camera -y things up, up there, the lensy thing. Yeah, get some energy drinks. And I've got my um, refrigerator over here. Yeah, grab some energy drinks. <laughs> uh, and the bloke will probably call in the evening or something. By the time I say hello, I'll be like, oh, how's it going, dude? You know, I'm turning into an Aussie again. Ah, how's it going, mate? I'm back a PJ extra bar and a scooter rush sex, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, pack of PJ twenties will do. Yeah, yeah, mate. Alright, let's go down the pub a bit later and you know, bang some rocks around. Yeah, you know, like that. That cuts in after a few too many of these. Ah, I really like it here, don't I? And I'm clinging on. But you know, if I like um, get annihilated, you know, yeah. Uh, all the bad people just keep attacking my business like they've destroyed my ebay business so far um, it's only a matter of time where they'll try and attack my etsy business but you know i'm trying to move on to the other stuff and sort of still do it because i love what i do antiques all that sort of thing um you know i've been doing it a long time and i really like that sort of stuff and like yesterday when I, they invited me to that buddhist temple there and i'm saying oh that's what that is and that's what that is that's what that is and in fact, uh, they had this beautiful incense burner there, and I've got one. 
similar to that. That was the one that had the shishi lion dog on top and the dragons at the side. But mine's uh, mine's also awesome. Yeah, but it's so big and it's like it'll, heavy and it'll, it's brass and it'll cost so much to send overseas at this time with this EMS thing. In fact, um, I mentioned, I listed that beautiful dispel yesterday and I mentioned the, uh, this, um, I carry in my pocket here, the, uh, tentative, tentative extra charges for this EMS thing and, you know, and they still don't have silicon on here. You know, it's all, it's been attacking me for years. And I got blamed for a lot of this because the shipping, by God, you know, the time frame. Actually, shipping to Australia is just just per normal. Like it used to be six weeks to three months, eight weeks on the dot to Australia. Canada, there's nothing. You know, see how everything. The world's on the wonky juice. I'm not mad. You're all mad. And uh, yeah, it's true. They didn't blow up my planet Furia. I'd, I'd, I'd be back there, kicking back, drinking some beers at the beach. Imagine that, wouldn't that be cool? Drinking beers at the beach on a Sunday. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the time frames, man, they've been killing me. But what really upsets me, it doesn't upset me, I'm, I'm just, I'm beyond the pain. It just doesn't hurt me anymore. Um, but, uh, you know, people blame me and accuse me and, you know, one, one uh, honour-bound gentleman out there you know, called me a scammer and, uh, you know, just all the beauty that I've done over the years for people. I mean, like, say for instance, if, uh, with the, the uh, categories, with, uh, weight categories, say for instance, you might have up to five, what's called, um, go kilo muddy, up to five kilos and up to six kilos, up to seven kilos. If I something... I've got to weigh everything and put in all this paperwork. You've got to go through all this bull. But if something's like 5.1 kilos, it just makes it over there. And I've already charged 6 kilos in weight costings um, to a customer. I'll go, okay. Yeah, I'll just look around the way. Yeah, they'll probably appreciate that. And loads of times, like, people have waited for so long to get things in the USA and Europe uh, in particular. And, uh... Many times I get emails and stuff like that, and they're like, dude, um, that inclusive thing, thank you very much, man, that's just fantastic. And, you know, if it's possible to do so, I do. Many times, not always, because then people start to expect things, you know. But uh, getting those little surprises, just, just beautiful shit that I've done uh, over the years, and just, you know, like I, I bother to take the product to somewhere and I say well it's not just a business it's a lifestyle and, and I'll take it somewhere and then do the video and then sort of so that people my customers will have that connection you know because some people like told me um, a chap in particular years ago said oh, I mentioned why don't you come to Japan and uh, he said oh mate I'm in a wheelchair and I'm like oh no shit and, uh, he goes yeah I, you know, I'm on medication a lot and I, I just can't and so that sort of really instill some inspiring thoughts of you know what for years i've been like i'll take pictures of something and um you know look like an amazon thing type of thing you know just like you got some background you take a picture and then try to sell that product and there's no real not enough meaning into it you know and so yeah that really inspired me i thought hey what if i make youtube videos of my stuff and my life and show people stuff and uh, so I started doing that and now I've got well over a thousand videos and I actually uh, hit exactly on the number of 400 subscribers and I figured early this year I figured you know what I'd like to have 500 subscribers by the end of this year I'm clinging on trying to survive but uh, yeah I'd like to have that you know, and I'd like to see. I'd love to go travel more and stuff like that, and just show my perspective of Japan and just my style of doing stuff, because that's sort of just a cost to everybody. <laughs> but it's often off case. Ninety-nine percent of the time, it's like, you know, dudes will just 
dude, where, where are you living at? And they drive me all the way back from wherever. And, you know, um, I hitchhiked over there, met some wonderful people. I, just, I knocked on a guy's window one night and said, mate, I'm so tired of walking. And he goes, yeah, jump in. <laughs> you know, it's great. It's great. So, yeah. It's really great. So, you know, some of the crazy fun stuff I've done. And I'd love to really travel a lot more. I'd love to go down to Sakura Gym though and show people that that volcano out, which is an island that became a peninsula down in Kakashima. God, that's beautiful. Riding around there, you hire a bicycle. I'd love to go in Shimabara Castle and Kumamoto Castle and mate, I'd go to the horse track in Kokura, you know. Oh, I couldn't afford that, but um, actually a mate of mine and I did that a few years back, had a blast. I took 300 bucks like Saman in at the time the, the US dollar and, uh, and the Japanese yen was like practically 100 yen to a dollar and uh, took the equivalent of 300 bucks. I got down to like 30 bucks and I just chucked it all on a, a place bet. First, second, and third on a donkey. <laughs> and uh, the donkey came and we just go, go on, oh my go on, oh my yeah, good night, yeah, good night. And uh, he, he, he just got in front of the fourth place guy, you know, he just got in front, into in the third, and nose in the third, and we're like, we're going, ah, drinking beers, and um, so, uh, and we were telling that tale when later on we were at this yucky Niku shop, and all the, met a bunch of boys there, a bloke gave me a Buddhist, um, um, a, a, what do you call it, the, the wrist thing, and um, in a bracelet, Actually, there's one of those that broke and all these, all these things. You go, ding, ding, ding. When I remember I was going down the road on my scoot and the bracelet broke and I'm looking back and all I see is all these beads going ding, 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 ding down the road behind me. Oh, what a wonderful time it was. So I went down to 30 bucks and back up to 300 bucks and then it was, you know, we had a, we had a blast. That was up in Kolkura. And uh, I hear tell that there's a racetrack in Saga. I didn't know horse I love going to horse races I love the country races in Australia they're awesome yeah and, uh, yeah you never win because <laughs> I'm a loser baby why don't you kill me <laughs> of late um, I've been uh, living even cheaper than I generally do well well, this is cheap beer, so I figured, hey, I still want to do stuff, so I have fun. But, um, oh, I figured I'd mention, yeah, I, I did mention my PayPal address. I mean, if you want to help me and you want to see good shit, and uh, you were, you know, if I had a pile of dough, seriously, it'd be you and I, or all of us, doing, seeing the, the, that, you know, I go to these places and film it, definitely. You know, I don't want to be a beggar or nothing. God, beggars can't be choosers. But, um, no, seriously, times have been, for years, just been a tap to tap to tap. You don't believe me, I had to shut down my, I put on hold, uh, on vacation, and then it came off the vacation time of a month, then I had to put it back on, on the eBay thing. I'm just going to have to continue doing that until the zombie apocalypse is over, which is some, uh, you can't believe. You, you just can't make this, you, you can't make it up. Yeah, you can't make it. Imagine that, like the internet just goes off on me. When last time it happened, like six months ago, like for three days straight, sometimes it just go off, and I'd just be waiting to see if the blue light will come on on my modem until I made a mic call, then I sorted that out, and it was fine. And now it's doing it again. It's kind of feels like a vicarious murder cyber attack upon me, but I think it's just instability because it's a really old apartment and some of the cables might be shot or something like that. That's more likely the case. Anyways, um, what I have been doing of late, so they, you've got uh, every convenience store, major ones around here, you've got this free Wi-Fi. So I've been downloading uh, e-books and I've got one right on this tablet thing right now. It's fantastic stuff. But yeah, um, like I say, my PayPal address you know, is happyoblivion at hotmail.com. That's my email address. And uh, actually, some I signed up for these uh, websites, quite a number of them for uh, work and teaching jobs and all this sort of stuff. And some dirtbag like every night and just send me all these junk mail. Yeah, 
just destroying, trying to read, read, read beauty, you know. But like, mate, if, if you fall, I'm the first man there to save your ass. And I don't even give a damn who you are. I've done it many a time. I saved a kid's life once. Yep. My ex girlfriend Naomi, of whom we were just doing the liney thing. She'll, she'll attest to it. Happened in town. And we were just about to walk in this major um, department store. And this little kid just, just happened to walk by me. And I just sort of, something clicked with him. And I was like, what? Hang on, some, some strange just happened. I look over this kid. And he just walked straight between these two parked vehicles. And then there's car traffic just going boom, boom, boom. By. Now the traffic itself isn't very fast to use, like 50k max and 40k max and stuff like that. But they were all there was loads of congested traffic. Now they would never have seen that kid walk straight. He was walking straight out into that. And I'm just so he's so lucky that someone wasn't walking by my left side just at that moment. I would have crashed straight in. I just just clicked within me, boom, and the speed. Of of me, I just went straight at him and um, just grabbed the back of this kid, you know, not in a push way, but just a grab and I had my other, and at the same time, my hand came around to the chest of this kid, so centre body of mass kind of stuff, so what do you call that, centre, centre mass, you know, when you shoot people, and um, and boom, I grabbed that kid, and uh, we took the kid inside of this reception area, and and they wanted us to wait around because she's Japanese, right? So she just told what happened, and uh, and uh, they were like, "Oh, can you wait around? We'll find the mother and all that." And I just looked over at uh, my girlfriend and said, uh, "At the time, you know," and I said, um, "We're still mates." And uh, she's in Australia, yeah. And uh, I go, "Ah, oh, come on, let's let's go do our thing." And then we left. <laughs> True story. Yeah, that would have been that kid's final day. No doubt. You know, some of the beautiful things I've done to people, I've uh, done four people, I've done two people, and just the attack upon my soul, man. I can't, you, can't, you can't make this stuff up. The attack, attack, attack upon me. Especially when the zombie apocalypse started and they just started ruining my business. Cause, uh, and all these um, rubbish people, um, opportunists, I took that opportunity to um, just prove that they're unworthy of the furtherance. Yeah. No, oh, they will end up being lichens hanging on to some moss on a cold, desolate planet somewhere in some obscure, nondescriptive universe. Aishite tato nageku ni wa yese mama kaze ga yeah, real folk blues, Cowboy Bebop, what a beautiful song, that's the ending song, wow, those episodes, God, that had an effect on me, didn't it, beautiful stuff, yeah, happy oblivion at hotmail.com, you know, some richy rich people out there, you know, like, like that, that, that chap that uh, in the wheelchair you just didn't have the opportunity to come to Japan and, and a few people told me they wanted to come a few years ago and uh, they've been trying to come and they just haven't been able to come here because of restrictions and travel restrictions and all this stuff so you know I, I fear for them because uh, we communi we're in communique I'm mean, in communique with quite a few people and you know they've got my email address and I don't mind um, I don't mind at all you know because what am I doing? I'm sitting here drinking beer. <laughs> I've been waiting for years for things to open up so my life can re resurrect, uh, resurgence. An insurgency. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's just been very, very painful. Yeah. But it sort of got to the point where it just doesn't hurt anymore just impervious I must be made out of titanium I swear or some kind of compound of it you know yeah um, I don't know what's stronger than titanium but there's got to be something out there cobalt or something I don't know what I'm made out of but talk about resilience you just can't if I reeled off some of the shit god damn 
a lesser being would would have topped themselves. Definitely. Yep. There must be a fury on it. Yeah, there must be a documentary, the Chronicles of Chronicles of Riddick. <laughs> Actually, um, it reminds me of when I sent a bunch of films to my kid, you know, uh, The Black Stallion and uh, uh, Highland, uh, The Last Samurai, and, uh, Predators, and the, the, um, the series of Predator and uh, Chronicles of Riddick and that series and, and stuff like that. And, few others that I purchased, like when I've got dough, I, I don't know, I just, maybe I'm just not good with dough, but I don't know, um, they, uh, I was told by Exy that she likes, she likes her films, but she likes Disney stuff, and I'm thinking, <coughs> yeah, Disney stuff, eh, yeah, uh, they've gone all woke, <laughs> There's no freaking way I'm going to send her Disney stuff. Because they, they write a story and they go, right, how can we fit this character into there? You know, and I'm thinking, what, what does that character have anything to do with the story in the first place? But what's coming out of Disney now, like some of that stuff that's been going on, and it's it's coming to light, and that's some of those real bad people doing bad stuff, right, um, to, to youthful entities. Um, yeah, it's coming out. And, uh, and all this woke stuff that's been going on, there's no way. So I, I, I sent a whole bunch of, like, stuff for real men, you know. <laughs> like, Riddick and, you know, just real men. And um, Arnie and, you know, so my kid can see videos of real men. Like, real men, yeah. You know. Um, <laughs> that actually remind me, I was just singing at Chronicles of Riddick just sent. I was with a mate of mine, we were in this... Um, some kind of yakitori kind of shop, and uh, it's, it's a while back, and uh, he's a, he's one of my drinking buddies, and uh, God, he's a laugh. Like during winter, we've only just broken in the spring. Winter time, he hibernates, I hibernate, and never see him, <laughs> never see him. Don't even speak to each other for months and months, and then it's like, bam, dude, you ready to go? I'm like, what? Yeah, tonight, <laughs> you know, whatever, you know. God, he's funny. We call him One Shoe. He's probably watching this. Um, we were at this table and this chap rolls up, he's a, a foreign savage and a young guy and a pretty good looking bloke, you know, and, uh, and uh, he's, we're chatting away and drinking some beers and a bit of a laugh and I think he's from California or something and, and uh, he, later on during the course of having a, a bite to eat, he, he looks across at me and he goes, you've got beautiful eyes, no, 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 no. No, that's all right. He said, "You've got nice eyes." And uh, my mate, my mate sort of looks over at me, and I'm like, and I look at him, sort of, just sort of glance over at him, but a sort of what do you call it when you don't sort of show a reaction? It's like a poker face kind of thing. And I like it. And I said, oh. "I go, well, I am a Furion." You know, some people pronounce Furion, uh, Furion. I said, oh, "I am a Furion." He goes, "Oh, what's that?" And I said, "Oh, you know, you'll probably." I ah, just look it up. You'll, you'll find it. It's something to do with um, you know, the Chronicles of Riddick. <laughs> no, no, no. I must have said something. Like, oh, something to do with the planet of um, the Furia. And he goes, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll look it up. And, and so he he starts doing his computer thing, and, and he gets up and books. <laughs> we never saw him again. <laughs> and so I lean out of my mate and go, oh, oh, that, that bloke, um, he's uh, he's, he's he's interested in um. In, Papas, really? And he's like, serious? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I don't hate the bloke. I know of another guy in town. He's he doesn't say he's one of them, but you know I don't hate the bloke. He's a nice fellow. I chat with him. I've chatted with him regularly. I've seen him on the the Gaijin circuit. I'm nice and all, but I'm just that's just not my bag. I just don't believe in that stuff. You know. Oh, but I'm a conservative, so that means I hate speech. Or I got done for freaking hate speech. I've got a, a strike, a community strike, that's forevermore on my channel. You know, and I try to just be, just try to be good to everybody, regardless of who you are. And well, to a degree, you know, mess with my kids. You know, pull out the chronicles of Riddick. Where's my blade? Um. But you know, 
I can't agree with everybody. I, I don't know one man on this planet that I totally agree, have agreed with. So I feel, you know, you should be at least disagree. But unfortunately, a lot of the uh, censorship and all that stuff has gone on. So, you know, if you disagree with something, they're like, the, the control is the arbitrator's like, oh, well, stuff that dude, you know. I'm like, that, mate, that, that's not good for you. And it's not good for me. It's not good for the, the quality of life and humanity and all that. Anyways, screw all that. Um, so I've been downloading these um, these uh, e-books, and I'm going through this genre, I guess you could say. God, I've never said that one. That said, it sounded a bit prissy when I said it too. Eh? Oh God, maybe that guy that I remember will tell me I've got nice eyes. He made an influence upon me. Anyways, I'm going through this genre of um, World War One stuff, the history of World War One and stuff like that. And, Beautiful stuff. I mean, there's so much beauty and the savagery of what that is. And it kind of reminds me, of, you know, you, when I watch dudes like Odin's men and stuff like that, and people send him um, uh, videos of like all these TikTokers, and uh, here they are getting out there on TikTok and they're just throwing a rage around. They're going, Aah! you know, raging away and banging on about this, that, and the other. So many of us are so goddamn angry. I mean, I should be freaking angry, all the, all the stuff that's been happening to me. But, you know, I can still try to keep myself together and um, do this. Another man would just be shattered. Yes. But, uh, you know, the, just the, what these people had to face, what they had to deal with. You know, I'm talking about you know, stuff like that. Uh, there's this whole chapter in this book that I read um, that's the, the book's called The Great War. You know, there's a whole huge chapter. It took the bloke about 40 years to compile this book. All the references and references and references. Fascinating stuff. And these blokes, um, back in the day, you know, uh, say for instance, we might perceive the army now as, you know, the, the grunts, you know, you've got the grunts and you've got the, the, the prissy officers and, you know, you've got the, the grunts and sort of, you know, small town poor blokes or something, whatever way you want to judge them like that but you know I'm friends with loads of military people so you know don't think that that's a, a slag off um, but uh, in back in World War One it's, it's well renowned and known that um, there'll be bankers and and coal miners and, and, and men of letters and poets you know they're all in the same trench you know all suffering and facing the same ordeal and by God now I'm thinking of these TikTokers like, ah, they have no idea how my God, how disrespectful is that? How easy do they have it? And how like that? And my God. You know, and the poetry. They say the only thing that was really efficient in World War I in the trenches was the post and uh, the postal service. And uh, they, uh, these blokes would write stuff nigh on four o'clock in the morning, sort of thing, knowing that they have to go over the line at 4 30 in the morning. And here they are on the line, they have to go over the, over the wall. And they know, they're in, say, if they're in the first line of uh, the first rush, the first push, the great push, they, uh, there's going to be a big push kind of thing. They, they know within within a few hours that they're, they're, they're forever more than you know, they they're, they're gone. There's some of the beauty and the references in, in this poetry is just way beyond my mind, way beyond... And so much of it is lost, the references to long lost bygone stuff, you know, beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. Yeah, I've got that book sitting uh, behind me, I uh, bought it in Australia at a knock shop. And uh, anyways, I've been downloading these um, these e-books from the Gutenberg Project. And actually I hear tell, uh, if a book, a book gets uh, over 25 years and over, it gets into the public domain. So then you don't have like copyright issues and things like that. So you can download this sort of stuff, and um, you can download it in different formats for you. Yeah, you can pick up your your free e-reader thing. Some of them are easy, these e-readers. I couldn't find the one I had on my Lexus, which Nexus Nexus Seven, which died another tablet. Um, and you could like press a button and if you had Wi-Fi, it, it'll, it'll like tell you the word, it, 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 it could, um, you'll be walking along and you can, it'll voice, voice read it, or computerized voice read it, all this, all this fancy stuff. I've just got a, 
and a, an average Joe one now. It, it does the job. And uh, I, I hear tell that oh, the, the Gutenberg project, man, you could be there for years. And the the genre of World War One, uh, there is there were so many participants in this great war to end all wars. And twenty years later, they're back at it, right? And uh, some knobheads want to want to do it again. I mean. It, 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 it's like, dude, do they even teach history these days in school? The horror that these dudes face. Oh, God. Um, you don't want that, mate. You, 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 you don't want that. Uh, a bloke was saying that um, there's quite a number of organisations that do this sort of stuff. He was saying that uh, he's studying at university. And all the book materials, all the stuff he has, has to have in order to do particular courses, his uh, subjects. He said that the books are really expensive. And he goes, look, I can't recall the website, but they're out there. And he goes, look, he's got this fancy pants phone, right? And he goes, look, this website, they've got them all here. They've, all, they've uploaded it all. And so he could just download all the material. He said, pretty much all the materials he needs to do his subject. And he says, this saves him a thousands, well, it says in a ton, and uh, so they're out there, but the Gutenberg project, uh, you'll, uh, you'll find that the search engine isn't really that great, but I'm just going through this genre of World War One stuff, and I tell you, uh, so <laughs> they've kind of gotten me a few times, because sometimes it won't list the, the book, I just get the, the, the download, the, the script without the, um, the illustrations and things. And so, pretty much Wi-Fi, it's, it's the books, you've got the whole book in seconds. Just the, the entire novel in seconds, it's fascinating stuff. I have a love-hate relationship with technology, because I'm a dinosaur, a Furion dinosaur. And uh, this, um, these books, um, sometimes they're, it was popular at the time, you see, after World War I, that all these fictionalisation books came out based upon the experiences of, say for instance, um, one dude was a, uh, a, uh, a sub-mariner and he was also working on capital ships, this officer, uh, an English officer. And another chap um, did something very similar. Um, I, it took me, I was like, uh, I read a fictionalisation actually that I picked up as an op shop book at the same time as the other one, The Great War. Um, which is called Storm Force to Narvik. Fantastically written book. I'm talking nautical speak. It's like a different language. It's like speaking in freaking Old English or Norse or freaking Latin or something, man. It's beautifully written. But this particular bloke was, um, just like one of them, um, like one of them, <laughs> one of those dudes I've been Well, no, and that's what they say about the navy. Was it? Anyways, <laughs> some of the Sasebo, some of my Sasebo mates, um, they're uh, they're actually subscribers, and they they um, they message me. <laughs> they might get a laugh out of that. <laughs> you blokes are you blokes are rad. Keep on messaging me, Leah. Yeah, that's just makes you feel good, you know. You blokes know that things are being pretty tough, and yeah, makes you feel good. But um, yeah, this uh, this author, he was, you know, um, a naval officer, and and so I had experience with a fictionalization that I knew it was a fictionalization prior to reading it because it told you in the preface, prologue, I think it's called, and uh, preface. Um, and so I'm reading this book and about a chap. Uh, a German U-boat captain, and I was like, I, it took me about three, <laughs> three, four, five chapters, probably a whole lot more, I don't really wish to say, that will sort of prove how stupid I am, uh, I'm like, hang on, this seems a bit far-fetched, you know, <laughs> this, this, I mean, the, the way they write it is... He wrote it, he was an English guy that wrote it, English author, and he wrote it in such a way that it had been uh, translated from a diary of a U-boat captain, and that was captured um, at, the, at the late stages of World War One, And and so it was written, in, and they 
put a romance story into it. And Stormforce and Narvik had a romance story inserted into that too. And so I was like, hang on a second here, what's this, a bit of poetic license or something? Uh, this is, you know, this is a bit sensationalist. I can't find the word that I'm looking for. But anyway, this sounds like a bit of bullshit to me, you know. That'll work. Um, and so it turns out I... So hang on a second here, because on the Gutenberg program, a lot of times it won't tell you if it's a fiction or a fiction or all this, that, now they're non-fiction or, or um, whatever. And so I um, I actually, I was halfway through the book, all right, God, I just had a revealed how far I got into it before I started to realise. And so I decided if I do look up to find out if it's a fictionalisation, I'm kind of not, it's going to really put a daunting, 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 it's going to that, that, that um, on the book itself and probably sort of might lose some interest in it, um, or sort of, what, what do you call it, water it down or whatever, I can't think of the word, um, but yeah, so I, I did, I looked it up and found it, that it's a fictionalisation of a chap, and that was uh, an English um submariner and and uh was on the capital ships also and uh, i was like oh and they got me you know and so i finished it though beautiful story beautiful story it was and the guy hang on wash down some pain but then so i um i uh downloaded a different one and the different one was about a uh, a squad, a platoon um, of the Frenchies, and they uh, in World War One, and they're in the trenches and all that. And um, <clears throat> it was written in beautiful English, so apparently it was translated into English. This story. So I get halfway through that, and I'm like, "Oh, they got me again!" Beautifully written it was, but talk about high-end English, but it had so many, so much knowledge of the French military. It turns out it was written by a guy that was in the French military, and he was English or something, and, uh, the, the, but it had so many references to French stuff, like sometimes you can't translate French directly, you know, au revoir, or whatever the hell, and, um, you know, I'm actually quite fluent in French. Um, you know, I know uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Merlot, and Beaujolais, and, and, um, and, and Shiraz. <laughs> God, I'm such a good um, <laughs> Anyways, so often they would write thing, uh, French, and um, I'd look those up. But yeah, I got halfway through and I'm like, oh, it's a fictionalization, you bastards. So now I'm reading um, uh, this awesome one. I've read quite a few. Um, Outwitting the Hun, a uh, story of uh, escaping from the Germans. Uh, and this dude was a, this is a real one, because I checked, I'm like, look, I'm, I'm reading a real freaking book here, <laughs> oh, you know, or oh, non-fiction. And this bloke was a, um, a, an American that was waiting around, a pilot, he was waiting around hope, in the hope that uh, he wanted to get into the Great War, and he was waiting around to do his bit, you know. And he wanted to, uh, he's waiting around for the Americans to finally enter the war. Which they did in what was 1917, was it? So, Great War being 1914, 1918. Some of you might not know that because they don't even bother teaching history or math, even though math is racist. Um, in um, schools now. God. Anyways, um, so he went to Canada and joined the Royal Air. What is it they call it? Royal Air Corps. I see it. Royal, uh, RFC, the Royal Flying Corps, as they called it at the time. Now it's known as um, the Royal Air Force. So they were training British pilots in Canada. And so he went there, trained, and then he got his wings. Uh, uh, you know, 
became a pilot and then got his what's known as got his wings in in England when they trained, retrained, uh, extra training, get boot, burp, um, in England. And then he went off to, to, I won't tell you the full story, but it's great stuff, great stuff. In fact, uh, I've got it on this, you know, on this uh, tablet thing right now, and I was just reading it prior to, to babbling, doing some mouth noises to whomever, all in sundry out there, no one's listening to this shit anyway. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, mate, actually, I'm an Aussie. Yeah, real one. Right. So, um, I'm at a point in the book of a, a moment that's like, it's really sort of really getting to a point where you're like, you, know, you just start reading it faster and faster and faster and you're like, well, I want to know what, how, how this plays out. <coughs> oh, take that, Disney. Um, so, I figured I'll stop. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm going to get back into it. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to savour that moment. Because some literature is just so wonderful. There's an offshoot thought. What are you feeling in pain, down and stuff like that? Like so many times when I was on the road, living out of backpack for six and a half years, and romance all over the place, and I'll tell you, the pain of train stations and... Airports, bus stations, stuff like that. Having to say goodbye, you know. I had 13 girlfriends in my life, you know. One was a. It's all pretty. Damn straight, that way. And, uh. One was a wife. Um. Yeah, having to say goodbye. Just knowing that you're never gonna see him again. You just know. Although all the promises are made but never kept. You wanted them, but I was just too fearful to leave my own country because I, I was scared. Yeah, it's true. Scared of being a... I was in my early 20s. And, uh, scared of... Well, what was something would happen to them? I'd be in a foreign country. On my own. Yeah. Now look what happened. I'm in a foreign country. On my own. <laughs> oh, I've got loads of mates. It's not that bad, you know. Shit ain't that bad. I fucking love it here. Um, but yeah, it's premonitions. Talk about premonitions. Check this out. I need to take a slash. <laughs> Just walk down there and put it in the big drink. Um. It occurred to me yesterday. It occurred to me yesterday. I mentioned about a bee, someone that would pick it up and put it in a tree, and within the hour, I was picking up a dying bumblebee and putting him in, trying to help him. Premonition, man. Yeah. Yeah, so I've been downloading quite a number of these books and some others that are uh, just really, really wonderful stuff. The language that is used and utilised here. The language of the English, man. The English. Hang on, I was talking about something. Yeah, yeah, many a time uh, I'd be in pain. I remember one time I was at this backpackers and uh, just after saying goodbye that night. Oh, God, that and yeah, you know, the butterfly pain and the smell that comes out of your mouth just from the pain. You get a lot of bad breath and it's that butterfly pain of when you break up. We, but we didn't break up, see. Very few of us actually broke up. It just the breezes run out.
reading a book, a beautiful book it was. I can't remember what it was now. I remember I was reading that, but I was still feeling that pain, and it just kept flooding my mind, the pain of it. And I've smelt this on someone else, a young guy named Nobu, a Japanese guy. Yeah, I've smelt this before. Um, they, were, they were staying with us, this, this Japanese girl, um, in, in Perth, and him and his girlfriend, Japanese girl, and me with a Japanese girl, and they were staying with us doing the homestay thing and eventually her schooling visa or whatever ran out and she left and about a week later Nobu-san he was there and I just as a joke I call him Nob I'm saying you know you're, you're a bit of a knob mate <laughs> but uh yeah and lovely lovely guy and but I could smell the bad breath on him I knew he, he was hurting man he was hurting he was hurting you could just see it in him he was hurting yeah I never said anything to him about it but I know that but um, yeah, actually, I remember at that time. Oh, I better get this thought out. I remember I was reading this book, this backpack, and I was lying down on my back and I was reading this book, and the the pain kept flooding into my mind. But I kind of practiced, exercised the ability to block that out. You know, like they say, uh, when, you, when you're working, you don't bring your problems to work sort of thing. Uh, maybe there's similarities there. And sort of just to block that pain out and keep reading this book and just sort of... And I focused on the book. I've had to do this quite a number of times in for many a situation. So I find for me, uh, an outlet get boo, boo, is, um, is literature. Um, for others, it's my mother, it's painting, you know. Um... You know, some of it's music. Uh, actually, I follow a lot of people that do. I, I, I'm subscribed to like, what is it, about 250 people or something? I mean, I just can't get through it all. I love YouTube, it's fantastic. I hope I don't get kicked off for saying some things. Um, all right, I'll, I'll ease off. But I'm, I am a fairly conservative fellow. Oh, that's a rare sight. There's a, there's a big jet over there. We don't see many of the big jets. So there are a few starting to come in, but that's the flight path around there. And uh, very few are coming, but get the freaking planes in the air, will you? God damn it. Nice yacht over there. Um, so that's for any of you out there that sort of hurt. And, um, that's my avenue right there. You can't have any plane. No, um, you know, uh, yeah, get on the Gutenberg project and just find a subject, man. I find like, I love going to these op shops when I'm in Australia and picking up the roughest looking books you can get. And uh, the rougher they are, the more they're read, they gotta be good. <laughs> and uh, sometimes I just close my eyes, do a bit of a spin around and just grab whatever. And I swear to you, I'm serious. I'll, I'll grab this book and it's, you know, there might just be 10 cents, might be a dollar, you know, cheap as. And uh, it'd be it'd be a book on freaking botany. <laughs> one was on botany, you know. Um, one was on self sufficiency, and one was on uh, uh, rudimentary solar power units and um, how to make them. Just just stuff. And so, in that way, I guess you could say I have been quite eclectic in my perusal of. Um, oh God, what am I? Some fancy? Oh, I never had it. Education, by the way, I'm a little bit ticked about it. <laughs> it's like, I'm not too ticked about it. Actually, my, my bro's wife is probably she's the <laughs> Disney. <laughs> um, um, she's um, she watches my stuff every now and again. Uh, yeah, she probably knows I'm a bit ticked off that um, my bro, you know, he got a scholarship or whatever and he's been to Oxford and Harvard and this, that and the other. He, a paid trip around the world. What, what does it have to do if you got a fancy pants doctorate degree in literature or the arts or the, the literary arts or whatever it is? He's a plant accountant because he likes number seven or some shit. Um, and he's making like a hundred grand a year. They, they, he, he works from home now because the cat, the, 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 the zombie apocalypse. And uh, yeah, you know, times are tough. He lives on a million dollar property. Yeah, and I'm not ticked 
about it that I had to go be a slave and um, start full-time work in a factory at the age of 16, um, and they stole my youth. Um, uh, an indentured apprentice. Field of tool making. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we weren't even allowed to have a radio in the factory. Yeah. But don't you worry, I got berated for not knowing anything about the, the, um, the extended world outside that, that, that those walls. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. But, alas, I have had a fantastic life. I'm talking about two girlfriends had horses. I'm talking about a girl taught me how to ride a horse. And I met this other beautiful girl years later. It wasn't that long later. And here we are riding through the forest. And I'm on her secondary horse. And she's into show jumping and dressage and all that bull. And, and I'm just following her behind her in the forest. And we had a bit of a kissy poo. I won't go too far into that in the forest. And I had a kissy poo with the other one in the, in the forest. For some strange reason, uh, maybe it's because I'm just an ape or something. I'm kind of like having a bit of a kissy poo in the forest, you know, and listening to all the birds going all, all natural. <laughs> yeah. Oh my, you know, I've been to the Great Barrier Reef and drank champagne arm in arm with a, a girl in you know, a Canadian, one of my, you know, the, the, the Canadian girlfriend, one of my girlfriends. And, she uh, waited for me for a year and a half. Uh, parents gave her a, was it a 200 acre farm and 200, 500 cows or something. And still in communique. She's with her family now. She was the only dentist in the, in the town. So I could have had it pretty good there. And the other girl was a millionaire. And Exie's a freaking zillionaire. And got influence. In fact, they. Kid has an actual title in her name. Can you believe it? Ah, that's true. Uh, yeah. yeah. Most Japanese have two names. And my kid, by legal right, they they ask me because I'm supposed to know uh, like what's going on. By legal right, I have a lot of rights to my kid. And so, whatever, if something happens, I'm supposed to be uh, informed of it. And I have a decision, a, a, a say in the matter, which is, sounds like, it's probably just bullshit really, just, <laughs> that's very, well I do, I do have a bit of a say in things, like some things I, I, uh, I, I put my, uh, put my foot down over, like for instance, um, she's, she was well in there, she goes to a fancy place over there by the way, and it's, uh, yeah, focusing on academics right now, but, uh, she was riding the marathon running and, and, uh, and uh, she was running the mountains at track and field, all that sort of stuff. And I said, uh, you know, if ever she's running in the mountains on her own, I want her to look like a boy. And so for a long time, she had a really short haircut and this and that. You know, I wanted that, all right? That's, that's right. I lay down the law there. So I still got some sway. Uh, so yeah, they uh, contacted me and told me that they particular reason why they wanted to put a, a, a name in there and I remember I was at the uh, immigration department I called up Bex and I said what's the name of that school she goes to again I, I know what's the address you know I need to know that and I said oh can I write that middle name into the, the documents the documentation because they want to know if, they want to know all about you and each time you know and she said sure you can so it's it's legal it's a legal title that she it's a title. Look at that. It's like royalty shit. It means one of the landed. See, up until the Meiji Restoration, in fact, they, her family came from the, um, had to leave during times of war, uh, the Fukuoka Castle, called Fukuoka Jo. And uh, they moved to different lands. And, up until the major restoration, they had to give away a whole bunch of land and all that sort of stuff. But they still retain a lot. So that's samurai stuff right there. And, uh, yeah, so they still have, like, influence and power or whatever they do. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, who knows how it all works. But when I told her to piss off, uh, she said to me, you know, on the phone, she said, you have no idea how much land we have. And what that actually means is you've got no idea how much power we have. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she still pays for this. My, uh, she's pays for my mobile phone. 
But yeah, it was. I must admit, it was a, it was a painful, it was a painful breakup. It's just. I guess it stems from when I was just a slave. I was born to be a slave, in my opinion. Yeah, being some non-descriptive slave that just yeah, you go in that factory and shut up and uh, just you you do that. And so, forevermore in my life, even from childhood, I tried to be free. You know, I just tried to sort freedom. Hello. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah, I always sought freedom, um, to be a free man, ain't easy to do, uh, yeah, so I didn't like sort of being captured, <laughs> Plane? yeah, some planes are coming, uh, anyways, um, every now and again I have a few too many drinky poos and the sort of pain of it, <laughs> how many times have I apologised? How many times she just nah. <laughs> you know? um, she knows I'm, I'm sympathetically sincere when I say sorry. Saying sorry says so much. Ooh la 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 la. Hey, I wasn't Elton John, one of them. See, I don't mind. His music's good. Ah, oh, God, I need to go take a slash for a minute. Yeah, I think she sort of might feel that hey, maybe I've been a bit outdone. She feels that I, she said years ago, she thinks that I suffer from, well, she must have told him that I suffer from childhood. That trauma, I think she called it. I don't believe it. I'm going to go take a piss.